Welcome to another lively edition of The Deadly Experiment. All of you out there in TV land, Rick Adams, your host and producer for the program, also known as The Deadly Experiment on Rick Adams' Uncensored YouTube channel. That's right. We're on by the grace of Almighty God, Yahweh, blessing us and giving us this opportunity to uh, share this witness of these times of the end. That's right, the end of this age when all of prophecy is being fulfilled. You realize that when you look at the Bible and you understand the Word of God, this Bible is a book of history. It is a book of science. It is a book book of mathematics, believe it or not. It mathematically balances and checks out. It is a book of mystery as well as history. And yes, folks, it's a book of prophecy. It tells us what's going to happen exactly as it happens. You know that? We are now, our nation, what's left of our nation, is really part of a one-world system. And that is so troubling to me and so troubling to many of us here on this planet who realize that we know we're in a time when America does not exist for all intents and purposes. That's right. We do not exist as an independent entity. We are nothing more than a cog in the wheel of worldwide government. That is globalization. Call it what you will. But America economically is now dependent and interdependent upon the happenings all across the world through banking, through fiat, through all sorts of counterfeit presses that are running full time. The dollar is dropping daily. The yuan is in trouble. All of these currencies in Europe and Greece are now teetering, my friends, and tottering on the brink. Now, that's not by accident. It was foretold in the book of Daniel and the Word of God thousands of years ago. That's right. All of it is happening just as God said it would happen. And now we're looking at what's happening in America today. The latest scheme of things happens to be a police state in America today. That's right. We're talking now about police brutality once again. You remember that was the case in the 1960s when we had the underground weatherman organization and the SDS and so on and so forth, Angela Davis and that crowd? Well, who knew then but a handful that foundations, tax-exempt foundations, including the federal government itself, were actually helping to finance and support these terror groups? You say, come on. Well, it's all there for you to see now. Why? Very simple. It was called dialectical materialism. The science of dialectics, which is the Hegelian model for controlling you. And looking back on it now, I remember being at Hope High School in 1969. That's right. I remember being in the middle of riots that were taking place on the building, the campus of Hope High School on the east side of Providence. That's right. And uh, nobody seemed to know what was going on at that particular time during a time of force busing, a time of so-called desegregation, all of the racial strife generated during the civil rights era. Well, we found out later that agitators were brought in to Providence from surrounding areas, particularly the Boston area, to stir the pot, to bring about racial tension, and to create a lockdown situation in high school. And I remember it vividly. I was there in the middle of it. And uh, this was the time of Superintendent Charles Bernardo and people like that who were actually part of the social engineering elite who were telling us that the old concept of neighborhood schools was outmoded, that the decisions, illegal though they may have been, by the Supreme Court in Plessy versus Ferguson and all of the subsequent Brown, Univers uh, Brown versus Topeka, Kansas decisions of the Supreme Court in 1954, all of that was the backdrop, the background, you see 
to this revolutionary mood in the country, which would transform America into a new world order, changing the way we look at government, changing us from a society allegedly based upon individual liberty to one based on group rights. And so the civil rights revolution took hold in America. The concept that government was now the bestower of rights, government was the source of our blessings. Just as the United Nations adopted the whole motto of peace in our time, peace through understanding, barring even the very mention of the name of Jesus Christ, bringing about peace worldwide is what Satan wants. So you see, the civil rights movement in America brought about the whole concept of police brutality and the anti-Vietnam War protests were all serving to create a new dialectic in America, changing the way we live. Now, it's interesting to note that once again, in the year 2015, you have the very same players, different names, their children's children's children are running this whole debacle today. We're now, in the last several months, we've had nothing but case after case after case of purported police shootings, police uh, killings of mostly blacks and done mostly by whites. Now, we're going to present to you today on this program a couple of video presentations that will, I think, clear the air or at least, shall we say, unclog the mind in so far as what we have been shown on Talmud Vision for the last several months, folks. The first video that we're going to present is a video by one of our friends who happened to get the videos that were presented conveniently and involved in the Walter Scott alleged shooting in South Carolina. Folks, if you ever want to see another Boston Marathon bombing drill or a Sandy Hook so-called drill, now you will see it again and again and again. Going back to 1969 and 70 and the riots in schools and the desegregation of Providence, it wasn't about rights. It was about government, growing government control over all of us. And interestingly enough, we're going to show you today who is it that wants government to create this concept of clashes between whites and blacks, between rich and poor, between one class and another, and out of it comes a police state, which then leads to a military state. You see, all of a sudden, folks, our police are under attack and some of them rightfully so, for crimes which have been committed by police. Nevertheless, we must understand that not all of this is real, that what we are being told is real, what we are seeing on television, or at least what we think we're seeing, is largely scripted. Who's behind it? What's the gig? What's the game plan? We just told you. It's all about changing and transforming America into a militarily governed nation, a police lockdown, a martial law scenario. How? By creating class warfare, spilling over into the streets of America, and creating the conditions of riots and revelry that will lead to control and lockdown. This time, as opposed to 1969, they have the technological mechanisms the support structure that will make it all happen. Today we have the data mining, the data control, all of the interlocking associations and cogs in the wheel of government control. We have Homeland Security, which was created following the attacks that they perpetrated 9-11. No, not those so-called Muslims, not those radical jihadists. It was done, as Jesus himself says in Mark 13, Read it for yourself. He talks about end time prophecy. And who is it from Jerusalem, the city of Antichrist, that would create the scenarios that we're now facing? 
In Mark 13, Jesus called his disciples together and pulled them from the crowds of people because he wanted to share with them the message to us today about end-time prophecy. And he tells us what will befall us in the last days. What we're talking about today, folks, is what will befall us. We're talking about total control leading up to a worldwide government which will ultimately collapse. The mortal wound in the book of Revelation shall take place and be healed. Now, who will heal it? Well, it'll be Satan himself, the man of sin. His number is 666. Six is Satan's number. Seven is God's number. Three is the number of completion, the completeness of God. You see, the Bible is a book of mathematics. The Bible does de deal in numerology, not astrological numerology or worldwide nonsense of that sort, but his numer numerologies, his numbers, his mathematical formula. And in Mark 13, we read where the Lord tells his disciples, this message I'm giving you is for you and not the multitudes. For should they understand in the end times, they would then be held accountable. And he tells us what to look for in the last days about men chasing after others, false Jesuses, believing in all that is false, father turning against son, mother against daughter, and you will be hated across this globe for my name's sake. Why? Because you will be saying the man of sin in Jerusalem when he comes is the false Jesus. He's not me. My friends, we are getting to that point where we are going to enter the final stages of the end of this age when Satan comes to heal the nations of the world who will be a one-world system. Don't be deceived. Read the scriptures. Get into the book of Mark and Matthew, and you'll see for yourself. But right now, let us stop for a moment and bring you the Scott video, the story of Walter Scott and how totally fictitious, how totally scripted this incident was. Right now, Walter Scott by one of our dear friends. Okay, guys, I just saw this over and over and over again, and you know what? Uh-uh. I don't believe it one bit. This is staged. This is a hoax. This is to cause further division between blacks and whites, between minorities and police, between people that love life and those that don't, period. I, guys, I've seen people get shot. Most cops have either a 40 or 45 caliber weapon on them. Okay, the days of nine millimeter are gone. Not every cop, but most cops have 40 or 45s. Most of them have 45s. Most of them use hollow points. We've seen hollow point bullets. The reason why they're hollow in the first place is for them to start expanding, to fold back on themselves. As soon as they leave the barrel, they leave with such high velocity that the air itself fills that little hole, you know, hence the uh, hollow point, and starts folding the metal behind, creating literally a big ball of metal traveling at a thousand feet per second towards the human body in this case. All right. Let me show you something. Hang on. Oh, and by the way, this is 10 minutes and 19 seconds of the same thing over and over and over again. Where is video of other cops showing up? Where is video of EMT showing up? meaning the ambulance people, where are people, like in Ferguson, you know, gathering, um, saying stuff, yelling at the cops, and all that stuff. Where is further proof?
proof that this even happened. Look, guys, look. I'm not kidding. I'm going to watch. Slowly but surely, you're going to see. Now, he does this over and over and over again, and that's good because it gives me a chance to explain step by step why I think this is nothing but bullshit. First of all, no blood, no screaming, yelling, nothing. Okay? Okay, now watch. Ready? Ten, eight. Eight shots right there total. Okay, then right now he is looking. He's looking directly at the guy videoing him. How did he even know he was there? But let's just say for a minute that so far so good. Okay, let's just say that this is on the up and up and it's exactly the way it happened. Okay, why did he look? Didn't say a word. I was on his radio saying shots fired. He tried to take my taser. This guy runs towards the killer. And in this case, it's a cop. Okay, no screaming, no yelling, no witnesses, nothing. This is the only video that I've seen so far. Okay. Man, I wish it wasn't so blurry. There is no proof, guys. There's no proof whatsoever that he was hit. I've seen people get hit. You know, especially in the back, it'll knock you down. The impact alone will knock you down. Or at least make you stumble forward a little bit. You regain your balance and keep running that's if you can from a 45 okay this guy he was hit three four times according to uh, mainstream and he kept running until he fell conveniently on his knees and as you can see there's no blood nothing zero no screaming yelling there's no other witnesses there is nothing other than this one person videoing. Where is the ambulance? Where is backup? Where is video of anything other than this happening? Okay, there you go. 50 year old man starts to run. This guy has no choice, right? He has no choice. He's a trained professional. He has no choice. His life is in danger. That's the only time you're really supposed to pull out your service weapon. This guy is running. This guy's much younger. Could have just ran after him, tackled him. But no, decides to shoot him. Five, six, seven, eight. And then the cowboy falls. He looks over. Make sure he gets videoed, calls it in. Guys, it's all. <clears throat> Do not fall for this. Okay, we're back now, folks. And uh, you can see by the video presentation that we have just aired on Walter Scott that you, you can obviously see that it is totally impossible for that black man to be shot the way he allegedly was and fall to the ground the way he fell to the ground, that this was, in fact, a staged incident. Now, I know you're going to say, well, how can all of these things be staged? Well, not all of them are staged. The riots are real, but who provokes the riots in Baltimore? Who provoked the riots in New York? Who provoked the riots across any state? that we're talking about right now. See, we don't have the benefit of going live as these things unfold. We can tell you now, though, without any question, any question in our minds, who is behind the training of our police, who is behind Homeland Security, and we're going to be showing you that in the next program 
to be aired following this week's program. It's very, very obvious that when Jesus was speaking in the Gospels about the end times, he identified the city where he was standing, Jerusalem, and he said this will be the city that will be the key to end time prophecy. The city and those who rule it. He said it will be more tolerable for the inhabitants, more tolerable in the day of judgment for the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah than it will be for the rulers of the city, Jerusalem. Who are the rulers of Jerusalem? The sons of Cain, the murderers of all from the blood of righteous Abel down to Zacharias, who was slain between the temple and the altar, and finally two witnesses to be slain in the streets of Jerusalem. That will come just before the real Jesus comes, following the false Jesus who looks exactly like the real Jesus, my friends. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be deceived. This is what he's telling us in his scriptures. He's calling his disciples aside in the book of Mark and in Matthew and Luke and in John and telling them for our benefit today that the called of God, the elect who are watching these programs worldwide and know who you are, you cannot be deceived when Satan comes and rules in Jerusalem, in the temple. Friends, it is the Mossad, the Zionist regime that sits in Jerusalem today that is orchestrating and controlling our police. We'll be back after this video that proves the point from an Israeli Arab who will show you how they do it. The more I go in looking for occupation, the more I find money. And I don't understand, so I'm going deeper and deeper. And then in 2010, I'm getting into a very interesting story about how the Israeli government and Israeli army was selling a new tear gas canister into the government of police, uh, Singapore, of, uh, the police and government of the Singapore people. They're selling tear gas canister to fight their protest in their country. And during this time, I'm looking and I'm saying, Israel is selling tear gas canister? So I'm going to, into the website of the sec Minister of, of Security in Israel, and I find out they're saying that Israel just concluded a deal with the Singapore government of selling the best tear gas canister ever produced and tried by the Israeli army. And it was he mentioned there a few lines later that this tear gas canister was proven to be the most deadliest ever. And I'm going back and I'm saying, wait, try the tear gas canister. Who would be agreed to be tried? And then I understand. They're trying the weapons every day. Not in labs, down there on the field. They're trying their weapons. I was trying their weapons in Bilin, in Yalin, in Falkadum, in Ebi Salah, in, Be in Bethlehem, in Hebron. El Halil, South Man Chevron, in East Jerusalem. We're trying the weapons every day and then we're selling it outside. And I couldn't believe the things that I'm seeing, so I'm going deeper and deeper. And then I realized that you remember this guy, the young guys that threw stones in the beginning of the protest? They were not Palestinians. They were actually an undercover unit of the Israeli army looking like me, Arab Jews, disguising as Palestinian inside these villages, starting a riot, starting something. So the Israeli army will have a good excuse to start shooting the place up and testing the weapons. And the more I go, the more I can understand. Is this for real? How long is it going through? How much money are we making? I'm going in and in and then I discovered in the last 30, 40 years, and this is a very, very partial list, this is the dictatorships and regime that the Israeli government and the Israeli army is trading weapons with, trading knowledge with, trading technology or training their soldier by themselves in those countries. In the last 40 years, we were involved in the worst dictatorships and regimes in the world. And we were making a killing out of it, literally. We are making so much money out of it. And then I understand. This is not an occupation, it's a laboratory. Sometimes as a soldier, I would infuse poison to Palestinians. Sometimes as a protester, I will run away with Palestinians and be in a lab rat. But all this time, we're trying weapons out and selling them out there in the source of everything. It's not the religion, it's not the land. There's a lot, a lot of money. And I understand that I'm standing in the wrong place. 
and I'm moving to New York City from Jerusalem. It's a big change. And I'm standing in New York City, and the last three years, I'm researching the relationship between our army and your army, our government and your government, and all the money that flows in the middle. Well, now you might be convinced. Who is controlling the police departments of America in major cities? Who trains them? Who are the killers of the Palestinians? Who are the murderers going back to the time of Jesus? You see, an Israeli Arab who worked as part of that laboratory, as he puts it, to show you the control that they have over America today, the control that Esau exercises over Jacob and the seed lines, folks, today is so apparent. By the way, our police, our attorneys general, the attorney general of the United States, the Obama administration, all of these are the result of those who control America from within. And they are not radical Muslims. They are not extremist Arabs. Quite the contrary. They are the synagogue of Satan that Jesus identified. Now, why don't you believe the words of Jesus? Why instead do you take the words of Lion Brian or have taken the words of him in the past only to find out you were deceived or lying Lester or any of the others? from CNN to Fox News. Folks, it doesn't matter who you watch, who you listen to. All of these are now major corporations that are fewer and fewer and fewer that bring you less and less and less true content. That's why the Walter Scott video proves that you can see with your own eyes how you've been lied to by your own media. Every night you are lied to, you are deceived in some way, some fashion, some manner. But we tell you the truth. We say, go check it out for yourself. You tell me, after we've seen the Charlie Hebdo lie, the major hoaxes that have taken place from Santa Monica to what's going on in New York, and I mean hoaxes in terms of organized rallies. Just as I said at the beginning of these programs, I was there in the riots of Hope High School on the east side of Providence in 1969. And you know what, folks? It's the same cast of agitators brought in to begin the violence. Many of them identified on our website, nodisinfo.com. Nodisinfo, N-O-D-I-S-I-N-F-O dot com. That's the website. You'll see it for yourself. We identified Heather Abbott. We identified Jeff Bowman, uh, the whole business of those who were involved in the fraud. Miss Gregory, who is also one of the key players in the Boston Marathon bombing drill and that hoax trial. We told you from the get-go, now all you have to do is open your eyes and open your ears to see the facts in the matter. What's the get-go? What's the bottom line? Why? Chi bono? Se bono? Who benefits? The synagogue of Satan creating that beast system, one worldism, in country after country after country. Police state, military state. Get the message? You're on the right track. Next program, we'll continue with more on the Synagogue of Satan. Rick Adams for the Deadly Experiment. Goodbye, and Yahweh bless his elect.